reversed feature erosion by opposite contrast dots in peripheral vision. I will present two examples of such illusions. When the feature dimension is orientation, this gives a perception of reversed orientation called flip tilt illusion. When the feature dimension is depth, this gives reversed depth perception. Let me show you that they are both analogous to the well-known reverse phi motion. A pair of dots separated in space-time gives motion. This example gives a motion to the right, and this one gives a motion to the left. However, if the contrast polarity flips from one dot to the next dot in a pair, the perceived motion direction is the opposite of the actual direction. This is the well-known reverse phi motion. Here is a demonstration of the reverse motion illusion. This appears to rotate forward constantly, but in fact, each element simply moves back and forth, back and forth. In its forward motion, the contrast does not flip. In its backward motion, the contrast flips, giving a forward motion illusion. Therefore, one sees an illusory constant forward motion. Let's call these header pairs of dots when the two dots in a pair are opposite in contrast polarity and call these homo pairs of dots. Let's generalize reversed motion to reverse orientation. This homo pairs dots are horizontally aligned, giving a horizontal orientation feature value. However, if it's a header pair, it will appear vertical when you view it in your peripheral vision. Reversed orientation is when the perceived orientation is flipped by 90 degrees from the actual alignment between the two dots. To demonstrate this flip tilt illusion, we start with a baseline image without this illusion. If you fixate on the central cross, you can see a large ring in the background of noise. This is by many homo pairs of dots aligned tangentially to the ring. This ring is in your peripheral visual field when your gaze is directed to the central cross. No illusions here yet. This second image differs from the first one only in the dot pairs in the ring. Every second dot pair is replaced by a header pair of dots. Now, if you fixate on the central cross, the ring is much more difficult to be seen. This is because the halo pairs appear orthogonal to the ring by the flip tilt illusion. If we make these halo pairs orthogonal to the ring, then by the flip tilt illusion, they should appear parallel to the ring when we fixate on the cross, making the ring in the peripheral visual field. Let's do that in the third image. It differs from the second image only in the orientation of the header pairs. Now these header pairs are orthogonal to the ring, and you can see whether it's easier to see the ring in image C than in image B when you fixate on a central cross. Most of you should find it easier to see the ring in image C. However, if you shift your gaze to the ring directly on these header pairs will be actually in your central visual field, then you will find the ring is easier to see in image B. So central vision and peripheral vision are different from each other, and this flip tilt illusion is only in the peripheral vision. Now let's generalize to the depth feature. Two dots at two different time instances are now two dots in two different eyes. If we give this binocular spatial disparity between them, this gives a black dot at a near depth plane. This is a homo pair of dots for a normal depth feature. However, without changing the binocular disparity, when a black dot in one eye corresponds to a white dot in the other eye, a near depth disparity can appear perceptually as far depth and vice versa in the peripheral visual field. 
This is the reverse depth illusion by head or pairs of dots. To demonstrate this illusion, let's start with normal depths without this illusion using this random dot stereogram. Left eye image and right eye image, all the binocular corresponding dot pairs are homo pairs, and this stereogram depicts a central disk in front of a surrounding ring. Try to free fuse these two images, and you should see the disk at a different depth from the ring. In the bottom stereogram, the central disk has the same binocular disparity as that in the top stereogram relative to the zero disparity ring. However, all the dot pairs for the disk are non hetero pairs. A black dot in one eye corresponds to a white dot in the other eye for the disk. If you free fuse this bottom stereogram, you cannot see whether the disk is in front or behind the ring. This is because you usually do this free fusion in your central visual field. Now try to direct your gaze to the top stereogram and free fuse. Now the bottom stereogram is in your peripheral lower visual field. Now you will find it easier to see the depths in the bottom stereogram using your peripheral vision. You should see a reversed depth in the bottom stereogram. Depending on how you do your stereo fusion, if you see the disc appears in the front in the top stereogram, now the disc should appear behind in the bottom stereogram and vice versa. Do you see this? I'd like to hear your feedback. These illusions arise from V1 neural responses. For example, this is a spatial resistive field for a simple V1 cell tuned to horizontal orientation with its on and off subfields. A vertically aligned hetero pair can activate this cell very well, but not another cell tuned to vertical orientation, and this gives the flip tilt illusion. Analogously, this is a cell tuned to motion to the right. It can also be activated by motion to the left if the dot flips contrast polarity. This gives the reverse phi motion illusion. Reverse depth illusion arises analogously from responses of V1 cells tuned to binocular disparity. More details are in these references, which also explain that central vision can overcome these illusions due to top-down feedback, which are hypothesized as absent or weaker in peripheral vision.